as many of you may know that uh, uh, yeah, I'm Eustace, I'm CEO and co-founder of Vinted. Um, during this day in login, I looked at many presentations and I saw people speaking about the stuff, what is a great business, what is a great company, what is a great product, what is a good retention, what is a good engagement, what is a great marketing and so on. So my presentation today is going to be a little bit different because I believe we have many great things uh, built uh, already at Vinted and I'm going to focus not about describing what is the great stuff but more about how those all pieces of good things are combined and how they are uh, organized inside the company so I will be speaking more about organizational stuff so my presentation is more about to reveal all of you how inside kitchen of Vinted is working out from internals which is very rarely uh, escalated or uh, promoted or talked uh, in the public, in public domain. Yeah, so I hear, I heard many times people telling me, oh, well, Vinted is a successful company because they just had a great idea and that's it. So, and uh, during my presentation, I would like to draw your attention and tell that actually great idea is mandatory but is not sufficient for uh, success of your business and of your company. And while I do, do not consider Vinted a super successful company yet, uh, but I believe we have many things uh, and I have many things to share about uh, internals of the company which uh, may lead to uh, successful your business. So. For those who still don't know what is Vinted, I'll just give a few slides about that. So Vinted is a, a product made of, out of three very important pillars or pieces, which is the first one is the marketplace for pre-loved fashion. Basically, it means that members of Vinted, so they can use their mobile application, mobile phones, and take pictures of the fashion they have, and they don't use it anymore, and trade with the other members. So I can take a picture of my hoodie, and if any one of you wants to buy that, so we can trade that using Vinted. So we have today, at the moment, we have $10 million GMV per month, which leads to 700 thousand transactions per month, which means basically that every second there is a new transaction made on Vinted. So someone swaps or trades the clothing. So that's how big Vinted is at the moment as a marketplace. Second piece, uh, which is as well super important for us, is the social network aspect. Uh, if you look at the, some metrics uh, through social network point of view, you might find that Vinted, that uh, each daily active user, the member, if it comes, opens the app, on average, they spend one hour per day browsing on our app. So this number is pretty close to social networks like Facebook or Twitter, so on. And uh, we have every day 600,000 members coming on daily basis. So today, during this moment or today, 600,000 of our members, girls, so they are opening Vinted app. And Vinted as well serves as inspiration discovery channel. So we have uh, 150,000 on average daily new listings uh, per day, daily. Yeah, so it means that uh, yeah, per day 150,000 new items are listed and you know, if you're looking for inspiration, that's a great source uh, to find that because you can just scroll in this infinite feed and uh, discover uh, all the fashion trends or all the items people are listing, listing to our platform. Those are typical customers, members of uh, Vinted. Not going to focus too much of that. Uh, here's a one slide of Vinted history. We started five and a half year ago in Lithuania. I'm not going to speak too much, but basically the chart itself represents the growth of uh, monthly active users on month on month basis. So you could see that at the beginning we were growing pretty slow and then only last years we just exploded. Uh, we started in Lithuania, half, later, half a year later we went to Germany. In 2010, at the end, we won even an award from Login, website of the year. So we were that kind of size at that time. Yeah, and uh, only three years since the beginning we were able to employ the first engineer in the company. So most of the time we were a very small company, not even a company as a hobby project, I, I would say. 
And yeah, things changed when we got the investment from Axel Partners, that was uh, a year ago. And after that, we launched new markets in Poland, France, open operation in the United States. Last uh, month, month, month in March, we opened operations in the United Kingdom. The fourth, fourth time we tried to enter that, and very successfully. Very glad to, that our team made that. And uh, 2013, year of 2013, we ended up with having 100 full-time employees in the company. So growing from two people in to 100 in three years. So that was a big organizational challenge for us to, to make, to learn how to work together so that we could uh, continue growing at a very fast pace. Very shortly as well, that's our operational map where we operate at the moment. This is vintage growth times year on year basis. So you can see that in 2011 we grew two times, 2012 almost three times, and last year we grew 4.2.5 times. That was an amazing achievement for us as well. In 2010 we grew five times, but you know, to grow from 1,000 active members to 5,000, maybe that's not a very complicated job. We were very small at that time. Um, yeah, that's the growth of the staff. So in 2009, we were two, me and Milda, my colleague, and yeah, 2013, 102 employees. Today, we have 110, something like that. If you look at the funding, so at the beginning, three years, we were non-funded. We, I didn't earn any salary, nobody earned, so everyone was enthusiastic. So, and then we started to get funding year on year basis, and as most of you probably heard, uh, January 2014, we closed the aspirational, <laughs> let's say, uh, round in technology in Lithuania, and we raised $20 million from American fund. Uh, we are not alone in the market. There are uh, at least nine very big competitors. Uh, so that's a list made not by me, but by CB Insights, uh, the company. Uh, so I'm very happy to see that nine out of ten competitors, nine out of te ten companies, they are all based in the United States and there is only Vinted based in Europe and especially in Lithuania. And as well, if you lo look at the total funding in millions in dollars, you see that Vinted is the most funded company from all of them. And if you look deeper to the metrics, so you would see that worldwide Vinted is the largest out of all those other companies except United States. We are still not the first there. So you may ask the question, or we may ask, or I may ask, so does that mean that are we successful or not? So I think the answer is uh, not yes, not no. I would say that uh, we consider ourselves more on an endless journey. So uh, we believe that we are just at the beginning. We see the really great companies like Spotify, Etsy, Facebook, so they are from 10 to 100, sometimes 1,000 times bigger than, than Vinted. So maybe in Baltic states, we can consider ourselves very successful, very big company, but worldwide, we are just tiny. Uh, and we see lots of potential to, to continue growing. Even if we stay at the markets we are and we do not open new markets, we see potential to grow 25 times just staying where we are. So it's uh, really an endless journey. Vinted is an agile, uh, self-challenging and always evolving company and uh, now I'm going to move to the second part of my presentation. I'm just going to reveal some of the organizational details and how we came to them uh, and what do they mean to, to the company and to people working over there. Yeah, so some organizational stuff. So as you saw, we grew from 2 to 110 people in three years. You know, at the beginning, like when we were two, it was easy to work. When we were seven, it was easy to work as well. But one day we were 30, you know, we had like, I don't know, five back-end developers, two web developers, some iOS developers and so on. Then, uh, and we started that uh, um, all those people who were just a bunch, one big pool of people were doing everyone by something which might be useful to the company. It led us to nowhere than uh, just the communicational horror, I would say. So everyone was dependent on the other one. So we, if we want to ship the feature, it was so complicated because you know, back-end developers were working on their own project's ideas. So then they were locked by front-end developers waiting for something. Then BI was locked by back-end developers. So everyone was locked and everyone was just communicating, interacting, and actually nothing was delivered. Until we evolved several times and we found 
uh, a way to organize our work itself, which we called uh, autonomous or self-contained teams, which basically, what does that mean? Autonomous teams at Vintent are small teams up to seven or eight people. Each team you could consider as a small startup inside the company. So what does it mean? It means that each team has very clear goals what they have to reach, and each team has all the tools they need to reach that goals. So for example, team number one, it's an engineering team. So engineering team, we need to release some feature, I don't know, some extra button on all platforms. So it means it has to be on web, it has to be on iOS and Android. So for that reason, we have like, two back-end developers, one front-end developer, one uh, iOS developer, or one Android developer, and all of them, so they are small team, they can do this stuff, they can do that by themselves, they don't need to ask to wait for an hour, so there is little, very little dependencies between one team and the other team. And, uh, yeah, and each team has a leader, the idea of the leader is not to tell how to do the stuff, but more to, to tell what stuff has to be done. And this is all left to the team members to decide how they are going to implement that technically. So there is lots of uh, freedom, let's say, to people working in the teams. And if we see some dependencies, like here I show two dependencies, for example. So we always try to cut them and to make the teams autonomous. So one example, of really practical one. We had BI team which was made out of analysts and data scientists, right, manager, but they really needed like kind of engineering stuff to develop more hardcore technologies, you know, and uh, it always led to the fact that they always had to come to the product team saying, hey, we need backend developers, we need backend, we need to build this stuff, we need to build this stuff. So we decided to, all right, so let's get some backend developers, put them into business intelligence teams, and so now business intelligence team is self-contained, small startup, so they can do whatever they want, nobody has to be disturbed, and that's great, that gives a great, uh, impression, great atmosphere to the people working in the company because they, are, they feel that they are in control of delivering stuff and uh, they still feel uh, agile and small even though th we have like 110 people working in the company. And even like the office is organized in the way that all teams sit together. There is a picture of our marketing team, let's say. So you see like five desks, so they are each next to each other, so people are just sitting together, and we have like that kind of, you know, how to say islands, you know, in the office, like many of them. So if I'm not uh, wrong, today we have like eight teams: uh, engineering, marketing, community support. So they are all having their their own individual space. So that was about uh, uh, autonomous teams. Uh, the other thing we really are experimenting at the moment, and we did a lot of effort, uh, a lot of progress, is a crowdsourced decision making. What does it mean? So there are two examples. So on the left side, uh, there is a traditional company, which is, as many of you know, how traditional companies work. So there is a big boss or a group of bosses so who make big decisions, right? So those decisions are then kind of given to the people, and people have to just shut up and do the stuff, right? So, uh, well, th that model works, uh, well, works, right? So at Vinted, what we try to do, we want to involve people to have an opportunity to make an impact to any decision we make. And it doesn't matter if the decision is, or the problem is small or big problem. So. Uh, and that was a big, big challenge for us because we don't want to, you know, to disturb people too much and to ask them, you know, uh, participate in the, this question, this question. You know, we have every day like tens or twenties different questions to solve. So, but we don't want everyone to, I don't know, waste their time on on doing that, on participating in meetings or discussions. On the other, on the other hand, we want people to have possibility to participate and to, if they are interested in some questions. Uh, to to the debates or discussions and to put their impact uh, on building the company and building the place they, they, they do work. So we found out, not perfectly yet, <laughs> but uh, almost, uh, a GitHub platform which is uh, actually used for many developers to store the code, programming code, right? We use GitHub to store the programming code, but as well we use GitHub as a crowdsourced decision-making social platform. And I will give you some examples how we do that. So we have like, there are just five 
different, as I say, repositories where code is not stored, but uh, issues or problems or questions or whatever which needs a decision are stored there. And everyone can access that publicly, let's say, inside the company. So, Windows slash company is all kind of company related issues, like Windows slash product, so all kind of product related issues. So, if you think you need to change something in a product or you think there is something great idea, so you use that repository. We have even recently we launched Vintage slash candidates where we, you know, where we, when we interview anyone in the company, you know, we have 100 people, people interview each other, candidates, and sometimes we messed up because we don't know who spoke to who, so we store uh, the minutes of the meetings with uh, candidates in, in GitHub so we know uh, who people are speaking to and if you want to propose a new candidate to join Vintage so you can propose that over there. Here's how it looks like. Very clean, simple view. Why it's good? Because you have uh, uh, very clearly separa separated issues or questions which need to have a decision. So they're open and closed. It's public. It's, uh, uh, you can go there and browse if you want. So it's uh, much better than email because on email all the discussions, you know, they are sorted chronologically and not by the fact if the pr problem is solved or not or and not by the fact if it is important or not important. So this gives us, you know, kind of distinction between unsolved and ongoing on problems. First point and uh, yeah, and it's very open so for everyone to to browse around. It's very social, it's like Facebook, so you get notifications, you know, like on Facebook, if you want to draw someone's attention or a group of people's attention, like developers or all the company's attention, so you can, in your debate or issue you're talking about, so you can just tag people you want your attention and they will get notifications like on Facebook. So very cool to, to see uh, what people are, who wants your attention at, on what kind of debates. And if you're not interested, so you just unsubscribe or subscribe to, depends on you. We have, of course, it gives a will to have some guides, wiki, so when new people join the company, so they can just go to our welcome page and uh, just browse. There is lots of information over there, where to look for, I don't know, some security keys, how to access the database, how to work, I don't know, with some bonuses, how to do that, 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 so it's all, kind of here on one page and everyone can contribute that. They can change, they can add new information, so it's, there is no one administrator, so all people uh, can do that. And we solve a bunch of different questions, so starting from very simple ones like how to uh, organize a Christmas party, right? Uh, to more complicated ones like Vinted is racing second round of investment, so when I write, hi everyone, I'm going to, you know, to raise the money. Uh, here is the draft of my pitch, so please look in, tell your comments, your ideas, and people can just contribute to, uh, to, to the discussion. And I was very thankful because I got many good insights from all the people uh, looking at the kind of draft deck for, for the investment. Uh, one day we had like a discussion of a person, one employee just wrote an issue. He said, well, I recently became aware that uh, in the company, we, next to the titles, we have seniority levels, like you know, senior developer, junior developer, la la la. Well, even though they are not used on a daily basis, but I feel somehow they are not very good for our company, so, and there are just potential cons. So, what do you guys think about that? So, that was a very long discussion. And I'm very happy that it ended with the fact that uh, we decided that we're going to drop seniority levels from the title. So there are no senior, junior, da, da. there are just developers, I don't know, community managers, and so on. And yeah, and as you can see, so I said execution is in progress, executed, so it means all the contracts were changed and the issue is closed. So uh, that, that were just a few examples of how this crowdsourcing uh, uh, decision making is is working at Vinted. So why it's great? So first, because it, uh, you know, you are not obligated to, you know, to go to all the meetings or all the debates you want to do, which happens typically in typical companies face to face. You know, it's a kind of 
you're doing your stuff, you have a few minutes, so instead of going to Facebook, you go to GitHub, you see what's happening, if you want, you comment, and it's a really social, open platform for everyone to participate, and you choose uh, to which topics you want to participate, so nobody is forced to, to, to participate in none of them, so it just it gives a lot of freedom to the employees. And on the other side, it really minimizes those face-to-face uh, -face meetings or debates where you think, okay, we have to invite all the company and to discuss about one particular company. Can you imagine like 100 people to invite for one hour, it's 100 hours, so that's, that's a lot of time. So we, want, we really optimized um, some of the decisions, like s more than half, I would say, of decisions we are making the company to uh, using that kind of platform. Yeah, and uh, together with GitHub and some other tools, we are going to so-called asynchronous communication. What does it mean? I, it means that, you know, if uh, in typical company you, you know, you are kind of manager and you are participating in many, you are involved in many areas of the company, so typically your schedule of your work looks like up there, like you have meeting one at this time, then meeting two at the other time, and so on, so on, so on. So it's somehow someone organized the agenda for you, right? So, and I don't know how many of you knows, but sometimes, very often meetings are, you know, very, uh, taking a lot of energy from you. Sometimes they are not very efficient, sometimes efficient, of course. You know, Monday morning, typical Monday, uh, Monday, morning meetings, you know, what people do during the meeting. So you, during the meetings, people come to make decisions, right? And in typical companies, decisions are how made? So on weekly basis, so you have weekly meetings, so you come to the weekly meeting, you have some questions, you, five people gather together and they make a decision. Well, we have like hundreds of great brains in the company, so we can make the problems we want to solve publicly and very often maybe we do not need to have a meeting. So the idea is that we want to reduce the number of meetings which uh, uh, tend to take your time from you in the way that, you know, it's in the way that not you are choosing what you are going to do during the day, but someone chooses because someone needs your attention. And using many tools, so we are not there, but we are going to that kind of direction. So we want to have ideally the situation that you have full of your day and you have full control what you're going to do. You need to work six hours on some project A, so you concentrate six hours, nobody is interrupting you. After six hours, okay, you dedicate one hour to look what's happening, what, what people need your attention, what are the problems going on, you participate, and then you need two more hours, so you do that. So it's not like as I said, mm, somebody makes a schedule for you and then you have to interrupt, be interrupted many times every day. Uh, many of you know the feeling that, uh, and we had a lot of moments, and myself I had a lot of moments when, you know, during the day you're so busy with doing some stuff, well, you know that the real stuff you have to do, which is really important, and somehow at the end of the day you, you, you understand that you have no time to do that, right? Uh, and it, it tends to lead to the situation that during the after working hours or weekends, so you try to catch up, catch up with the real stuff, the really important stuff to, to do. So the idea is that we want to move out of this and to be able to organize the company in such a way that people who are who need, really need to do really important stuff, so they focus on that first, and all the others are kind of second priority stuff. And that's as well very aligned uh, with um, autonomous teams because in you know, autonomous teams you just focus on one problem you want to solve and you just organize it as you wish. If you need to have some meetings, so it's up to small organization to decide how to do that. Just there are some examples of some tools we use. So GitHub we use to, to make decisions. We use Slack for kind of real-time communication. Skype, Google Hangout for video chats if we need, uh, calendars are public and so on. So all those tool, tools lead us, almost led us, not yet, to have so-called remote teams. It means that the team which is today at Vinted has to be at the same place to work super efficiently, right? So we want to make the possibility so that people could join the team and feel not unprivileged 
being not in Vilnius or any other place, physical location. So to be independent from physical location and to be part of the team really and to uh, contribute to the goal uh, the whole team is contributing. Right, so mm, this is the only way Vinted can go in future because uh, we need more and more more qualified, let's say, expertise in our company. And we are pretty famous now so that we would be able to attract people from uh, not only Lithuania, but uh, United States, for example, right? People from United States, they do not want to, I don't know, to relocate to Lithuania. So we have to find out creative ways how we can integrate them. And that's, uh, at the moment, we believe that's the only way we can uh, solve these integrational questions. <laughs> I would like to share some engineering details about the stuff, how we built. As well, it's uh, very in line to the philosophy of the product company as we are. Not going too much to the details. So one example to illustrate how uh, things are developed, deployed, or shipped, delivered, right, at Vinted. So as you can see from the picture at the top, so we are the company which ships or delivers changes very quickly. So, and with uh, very small iterations. So if we want to build a car, so, you know, we at the beginning build a skateboard, we see if members are happy, if happy, so we upgrade that to a bike, if then they are happy, so we just do a car. And we don't do in the way that, you know, we work for half a year to build a car and, you know, maybe to ship it without wheels or <laughs> lights or glasses. So, and only at the end we expect the customer is going to be happy. Now, so we want to ship early with a minimal viable product uh, to test it, to see if everything is all right, if all right, so move on. If not all right, so just drop it and go to the next idea. So, and it means that we ship today 300 times per day. It means that if you're browsing app or you're browsing web, so every few minutes there is a new version uh, you're browsing. So very small changes are just shipped like over couples of minutes in interval. So each developer makes a change, small change, even change one line. So commits the code, so automated testing just runs to see if everything is fine, if nothing is broken, if everything is fine. So it just roll out automatically across all the countries. Then it takes from your kind of merge commit, let's say, from your change to, to the live five minutes, like that. So, and then you can really quickly see what's, what's in production. So, we don't have like a quality assure, like testing servers or testing platforms, right? So, our testing platform is our production platform. So, we test things on a production. It's not like people come and see some things, you know, partially working. Of course, we have some feature switches, you know, so that only vintage people could see new stuff, which is not completed yet, not working fully. So, and then they can test on the, on the production on, with the real data, real members, uh, that. And if we liked it, we roll it out to 10% of members see if nothing crashes, then we rolled out to 50%, everything is fine, so then rolled out to everything, to everyone. So we, sh we focus on shipping and delivery a lot, and we present results every two weeks during the event called Demo Day. So Demo Day is an event where all the company gathers, even those who work not in Vilnius, we have like six offices around the world in Europe and the uh, United States. So we connect using Google Hangout and all the teams make sure five minutes presentations. What did they do? They say, okay, I did this, we did this week, they said this. We delivered payments in UK or whatever. So it's free to every team to take the slot and to, to demonstrate what they have done. Yeah, so when we build the stuff in Vinted, so we never do that based on kind of gut feeling, you know, every change we do is to serve uh, better user experience so that people would love Vinted much more. And that has to be measurable. So meaning that whatever change we make, so we always do A-B testing. Like not to go too much details, but if we make a change, so we just make the change available to let's say half of the member base and half of the member base doesn't have the change. And then we measure what's the impact to the product and the behavior of the members. And if we see that uh, behavior or the improvement is 
very visible, so we say that that was the great change, we roll it out. And very often we find the station when we make a change, we test it and we see that it's actually worse than before. So this allows us constantly to improve the product in a way so that we would not screw it up, <laughs> the experience. So just stupid example to illustrate that, uh, th those are member engagement cohorts, which says how many members are active after registration after two days past registration or three days four five six days and so on. and there are two tests running one feature is developed uh, it's on and for half of the members is off so and we can see with where is the green line and the test is called a u f auto user following <laughs> one is on so we can see that uh, this feature kind of really increased like slightly maybe five percent the stickiness of member, right? So that's a great change. So we are very happy. We applaud all the team. We roll it out. Means this improves our product experience, and people just love it more. Of course, not everything is simple as as this chart. We look at many different metrics, but the general idea is like that. And all the things we built, we tested like that. So with an idea to make even that even better, more comfortable, and so on. And we, yeah, we, that, that's the only way we, we work. Yeah, and um, yeah, then I uh, just wanted to share about some practical details about the kind of our cultural things, let's say internal company stuff. Nothing super fancy, a bit maybe corporate, uh, I would say, but you know, as we said, we tend to make teams uh, as a small startups really self-organized you know that they would people would really work together on a daily basis so vinted is sponsoring kind of monthly budgets for team building so if you want to go with your team for i don't know some racing or some drink so that is sponsored by vinted we believe in annual in improvement a lot so we have like annual improvement bonuses like 10% of your salary you can uh, dedicate to I don't know trainings conferences whatever you like you choose and you choose it and then you can go and to train yourself we believe that mm, people who work at Vinted should use our product and our apps right so that's why we have introduced shopping budgets it means that every month you have 100 liters to spend on our platform so you can buy stuff and try our product and uh, you know it's very important for people who build the stuff to use the stuff so we encourage that a lot uh, those who don't have iPhones or Android since Vinted is mobile application so we build we buy the best available equipment so developers just work with the best uh, laptops whatever phones they need so that's just by default in the company and this leads us to as I call company version 2 if I'm able to say that where mutual respect community transparency focus on delivery and democracy is over competition hierarchy bureaucracy focus on the process and autocracy this is uh, something built by all the people at Vinted and uh, yeah I'm very proud that we are all able to uh, to to, fo to go to that kind of direction as well it allows us to be company with the product first uh, sorry people first product pe people first focus it means that uh, the whole basement of all the company all the organization site is uh, uh, the first step is to you know to focus on people and make people <coughs> really happy in our company so that they could follow their own personal dreams desires and um, challenges they want to take in their lives and that Vinted is able to provide them to them and only at that time only at that, at that combination and then people serve to build a great technology and great technology is built not just for technology built to to deliver a great product and by having great product we believe that profits are going to come afterwards naturally so uh, that's kind of sequence of the thinking uh, of the company <coughs> yeah if you want to see some more kind of insights of our cultural life internal so please do not hesitate to visit uh, our photo blog we work at vinted.tumblr.com and uh, Hope you liked my presentation. <laughs> there are some questions. 
Yes. So, one question. How do you solve the lack of Ruby developers in the market? Very tough question, right? So, you know, in Lithuania there are like 30 Ruby on Rail developers, right? And I know all of them. <laughs> so, that's a very tough question. So, what we do, so we try to, well, I'm mostly, I'm the one who is leading the, um, the attracting engineering people to the company. I try really to listen to people what they do, what they are happy about or not happy about what they do in the current uh, working place and so on. I believe that at Vinted we built some really great stuff uh, from an uh, engineering point of view, which is very rare to find uh, in Lithuania. So I always try to attract people by showing them kind of next step, which might be uh, next step of their career, which might be vintage and uh, just, uh, you know, personal, uh, mm, let's say, work inside that. And sometimes it takes like half a year and year to attract people. So that's one point. Second point is that uh, uh, we, we hire as well not only Ruby and Rails developers, we just hire any developers because I believe if the developer is great, so it doesn't matter if he codes uh, Java or, uh, or Ruby or I don't know, whatever, and, or PHP, and people really kind of convert themselves to Ruby and Rails in a couple of months. So we just, if we see that there is a great developer, so we just really attract them to the company. Uh, we also believe that great engineer is uh, kind of his efficiency is like 10x uh, compared to good engineer so that's why we always try to attract only really the best people and you know it doesn't matter if they are more expensive and so on because you know the efficiency of 10x repays everything and you know economically it becomes really uh, a really good deal to attract them so yeah um, the third, way, third point, how we attract, so you know, I make presentations like that, we speak, uh, uh, we speak in the conferences, we try to show the environment, the culture, the engineering processes, uh, team working in our company, and then people, uh, they just come to us and apply, and I'm very happy that recently we have like, people applying to, to Vinted by themselves, and great people, so that's how we do that. So, hope that answered the question. <laughs> yeah, uh, one more question I had. Uh, what are the biggest challenges in going internationally and multiculturally? I would say that uh, really the biggest challenge for us was and still is uh, organizational stuff. Because, you know, when you go to a new market like we used to go before, we open the offices in a new country, right? We build a structure in the new country. There is a general manager. There are some marketing people, some community people, and so on. So the, the biggest challenge there is to how to integrate those people to the whole company because nobody wants to be, you know, in the second important or let's say second layer of the company, right? Everyone wants to be a part of big vintage. So, and this kind of organizational people integration is uh, really a big challenge because when you feel that you're you know, you're second, not the first one, second layer company, let's say, so that it really does not motivate people and not motivated people don't, do not kind of uh, build exciting stuff. So that's kind of one challenge. Uh, and yeah, multiculturally, uh, we do not have like, uh, I wouldn't say that we have a big challenge uh, of going to multiculturals because Western Europe, United States, they do have some differences, but um, all those communication tools we have and uh, all the open-mindedness of people in the company, so, you know, they allow us to understand all the cultures kind of pretty quickly, having the kind of data-driven approach to, to the metrics so we can really see the differences between the culture out of metrics, not out of gut feelings, so, combination of BI, combination of our communication side, combination of people being open-minded, so all that adds up and kind of minimizes the challenge of multicultural. 
does anyone want to ask a question not from Twitter? <laughs> All right, so I will go for the next one. Are you investing in young talents at universities? So the answer is no at the moment. So we just track people who can join full-time to Vinted and then we invest to those. Carlos Birgilas, News Weekly, Economic Alta. Yes. Uh, I have one insight uh, yet. Uh, Mao Drabuji was started on the verge of economical crisis when the, uh, how to say, the second market fashion was on its verge too. Yep. So if uh, Mao Drabuji would start today, will it be as successful as Vinted is today after five years? Uh, yes, of course, and we already proved that by very long presentation. Um, by that, so we launched in US. Oh, doesn't show. Oh, yeah, we launched in the US uh, September last year. It's, uh, now it's the second largest market in our portfolio. We launched UK two and a half weeks ago. And today we have 50,000 members already. So, I mean, just metric shows that it's not only about recession and kind of urge for second-hand cloud. It's just really lifestyle app. People love it. Do you plan about Windows Phone platform? Um, not at the moment. So even though Windows platform is emerging, but uh, we focus the company on the other things, and this naturally brings the third platform, fourth platform on the second priority. All right, so thank you very much.